What's up, everybody? Wednesday morning, August the 3rd. Hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson, uh, coming at you. I know it's not been a Daily Market Commentary as of late, as I have been traveling. Uh, but if you're going to travel, this is the time of the year to travel, because there's not a whole lot going on in the market, although we have seen some decent movement. So this is our first time back in a few weeks. So I appreciate the, uh, the, the questions on where we've been. Uh, but now let's talk about where we are going and what's happening. So starting with the S&P. So the S&P this morning is up 15 points. Um, we are seeing a bit of a rally. And if you remember back a couple of weeks ago, uh, we asked the question, is the bear market over? Have we seen the bottom? And really, um, what we had looked at was the higher swing high and the higher swing low on the daily chart. And that has continued to persist. Now, I'm not saying that we've seen the bottom, um, but I, I do feel like it is, you know, that we have put in uh, this this bear market is essentially over. Um, and it was as of June the 17th. Uh, and that was our that was really our low point that uh, that occurred. We, you know, we since have had a, a follow through day, a number of higher swing highs and higher swing lows on the daily chart. Um, and so now looking at the weekly chart, the weekly chart is coming up on what would be the most definitive sign, which would be price getting above 4206. We're certainly not there yet, um, but we are closing in on that as a potentiality. So what am I looking at from a small time frame perspective today? Well, we are chopping a bit sideways on the hourly time frame. The four hour chart has seen a slowing of momentum in the upward movement. Um, and the one hour chart, uh, we're up about 15 points this morning, but we certainly have a little bit of chop going on right now. Um, there is a 15-minute demand area down here that does exist as a confirmation long, and it's a confirmation long because we've, we've come close to it before without getting in, um, but it is still a very valid level. And a, and a much cleaner level that exists down below, which is in this, in this rally base rally, which was formed right at, right at around a, uh, uh, a market open, a little bit after the market opened, but it, but a fairly uh, a fairly decent time of the day for a level to be created. So those would be the two levels in the uh, in the S and P that I think make the most sense. Now the other side is that, that sets up a little bit of a trap for the people that are getting short below forty eighty one. Uh, now as far as a smaller time frame, what there might be from a smaller time frame perspective. Um, we had a little run up here in the last, I don't know, hours, uh, last couple of hours, uh, where you've got a little bit of a demand area in here that could serve as a bouncing point for price to, uh, to bounce off this level. So keep an eye on this as a potential entry point, make it purple because it's a 15 minute chart. Um, and then also you've got a 15-minute supply area that exists up in here. Um, and that would also be purple, purple due to the 15-minute chart nature. But understanding that that area would be counter trend, so it must be a confirmation entry. So what that means is there's a lot of room for price to run up today uh, into this region. So let's see if we continue to run up throughout the day. You might just have to get long on a pullback that's created in the intraday time period. Uh, the NASDAQ, very similar picture. Let me get rid of some of this. Um, show you this on the daily chart. So on the daily chart, we had looked at this area here as an area that could be a stall point because we did have an old area of support. Old support oftentimes acts as new resistance. That shows up very cleanly here in the weekly chart. Um, and we are closing in on putting in a higher high than the pre previous weekly high. So a pretty important week overall in the NASDAQ. And the daily chart is certainly stalled at this area, right? We've seen some stall at this area. Matter of fact, two reversal candlesticks have been put into play. So I wouldn't really be surprised to see a little bit of a sell-off and a little bit of a breakdown. Um, that sell-off, that breakdown could take us down into this region down here. Um, I think this is our best level at 12,660, uh, 12, um, if we can make it back down into that level on the hourly time period. <clears throat> Insofar as the 15-minute level goes, I would look to this area right here, um, similar to the S&P level, for a potential reversal. Okay, and that's 12,938 by 12,924 for a daily chart, daily trade. 
Um, next, looking at energies and metals, starting first with crude oil. Uh, crude oil, we we have put in. Um, you know, we got we 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 finally came below that ninety three area, and we've just kind of been basing at that zone at that level. Um, let me get rid of some of these lines here. We got a fair amount of levels to clean up. Um, now we've we've hit this bottom, this ninety three area, which has which has been support right there. Support, support. We poked a bit below there in the middle of July, hit it again, and now we're we're sitting there basing on it yet again. Um, I I do believe that it makes sense that we would break down below there, and that your next really good level comes in at about eighty five. Um, I think that's the the longer term number that makes the most sense in crude oil. Uh, if we look at this on the hourly chart, we can see that we had uh, a little bit of a reversal at some of these areas. Um, we've hit them a number of times, and so now I'm going to pull them off the chart. And we're sitting right at a place where you could see a breakdown trade. I'm going to make this a little bit tighter to where those wicks actually are at about 92.53 um, would be your, 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 your breakdown trade. A little bit of supply exists up at this region here. Now, we came close to it without getting in. Um, and so that makes me switch it to a confirmation short. And But I think that's what makes the most sense for a potential breakdown. We're down a little bit this morning, not a lot, essentially flat this morning. Um, and so in looking at what we've got going on this morning, I think that this is... A very nice supply area. Uh, we call this a noisy cricket when it's a wick over wick below a pivot high on a 15-minute chart. A little bit of a noisy cricket level there at 95.50. Um, and then another little level right here that is the is not the origin of a move. It's a retest of this level over here to the left. Um, but however, it is formed at a pretty good time of the day for a potential reversals. And so that level, while I like it, I have to make it a confirmation short. Since we've already, you know, moved away from it the first time. Okay, so that would be what I'm looking at in crude oil. Gold has gained a bit of strength uh, lately. So looking at the daily chart of gold, we have gained a fair amount of strength since the end of July, uh, rallied up into our one hour supply level um, and that hour supply level let me get a little bit more time on my chart here was a very cleanly drop based drop uh, you know pretty well uh, described drop based drop right below a pivot high some of our favorite kind of levels if you guys listen to the sh to the to the DMC on a regular basis we talk a lot about this that would be the area where I think you're most likely to see a reversal and that's where we got. We got a nice reversal out of that zone, and price is still moving down from that area. Now, as far as our four-hour, what's our four-hour trend telling us? Well, our four-hour trend is up. Higher swing highs, higher swing lows, telling us I'm better off being a buyer. A um, little bit of weakness happening here in the hourly time period uh, with lower swing lows, lower swing highs. But the four-hour does continue to be bullish. Um now we we'd have to put in a lower low if we get below if we get below 1771 that's going to change things a bit and so below here this would make this a confirmation entry because it would change my big picture trend okay so if we drop below 1771 my big picture trend will have changed direction and at that point then it will make sense to look at this area here for a potential short, but it's not a potential short until we get below 1771. All right, let's take a real quick look at the euro. Um, we've talked about the euro a lot lately since we hit parity, um, and now we've just kind of chopped around a little bit. I will say that my my thought was that we were going to make it all the way up to 105. We have not. We have since stalled um, pretty hard at 102 with not a whole lot of movement coming out of there. And so when you have this kind of price action, sometimes the, the the best thing to do is just to wait for price to enter into a level that is just so clean that it's almost ironclad as a strong level. And none of these areas close to current price 
are, are going to qualify for that. There's an area up here at 103 that I do like, but none of the areas close to current price are going to qualify for that even a little bit. So at this point, let's hold off on really a lot of trades in the euro. So that's what I got for today, everybody. If you guys have any questions, shoot us an email, support at tradersarmy.com. Until tomorrow, I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Hey, thanks for joining us. If you like what we do, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's the only way the computers know that you're actually alive and really care. And go to tradersarmy.com today to learn a bit more. And if you want to see some of our other videos, click here in the box.